back to another episode of No Holds Barred Podcast. David Joseph, Marcus Pierre, the usual suspects at your service. But today we got a great member of the Brockton community, a film director and a filmmaker, Nubi Rato. He's gracing us with his presence. And Nubi, I'd just like to jump right in and ask you this question. Um, there's a lot of kids in the Brockton community, obviously. Some are doing good, some are doing bad. And obviously when there's a lot of bad going on, you know, the negative stigma takes over the community. But I do believe, as I as I said in part one, there are a lot of rising stars and potential in Brockton. With that being said, what would be your number one advice be to a young person to be successful? Um, you know, we were talking about it a little before. I think you got to be able to humble yourselves. You know, be able to humble yourselves. You know, one, one stat that I noticed is that, you know, less than 2% of people in the media are of you know, African descent, you know, which, which is very interesting, you know, which I feel, you know, people in the media, particularly people of color, have an obligation, you know, to, to really, um, you know, portray a positive message. Humble yourselves and, um, you know, I, 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 I'm going to say it once and say it again that, you know, I've been, I've done internships, I've logged tapes in basements, you know, where I have, you know, I've, I used to work for Channel 7 News um, as an intern. That's amazing. I, I used to, uh, you know, Lock every strike, and it was tedious. It was work that I didn't like. You know, we got paid seven dollars a day, which is nothing. That's like pennies. Um, but you know, I was able to learn from people who are smarter than me. You know, and you gotta be able to listen down. And just you know, once in a while, sit down, shut up, and listen to people who are smarter than you, younger or older. You know, and um, another thing I wanted to you know let people know is you know don't get fixed on facades. Fix on facades, and that you know. You know, you're doing this, doing that, you know, but, you know, you're, you're not portraying a reality of what's going on. My reality is I'm an inspiring filmmaker who's won awards, who's been nominated for an Emmy Award, but I'm not rich, and I haven't made it the year. My reality is I'm teaching full-time TV production at Lynn for I have the time to pursue other passions, which is documentary work. That's my passion. That's my reality. My reality is I'm not this filmmaker traveling around the country with big baller doing all this stuff. If I if Do you I feel people get it twisted and tend to think that about I think, I, think, I think most people, a lot of people get it twisted. Not yeah. necessarily with me. I think, you know, it happens sometimes to me with everyone else. You know, and, and I think people, you know, live in this fake world about, you know, I'm doing this, doing this and the other, but they're not being true to themselves. And by doing that, other people are watching you. So it'd be a disservice for me to say I'm doing this, that and the other. And, you know, because you may watch me and say, you know what, Wow. That's the way to do it, but you didn't see the grind, the hustle. Yeah, exactly. And I think yeah. it's important that people need to realize the grind and the hustle because I'm at this level, which is nothing, but I had to bust my behind just to get to that level. Just to get nothing. You know, yeah. ne never alone, you know, how a Tyler Perry is. And some of that is luck, too. Luck plays a lot of part involved yeah. in stuff. You know, ways, you know, you, know yeah. you got busted behind, but sometimes you make your own luck when you bust your behind. So it's, you know, Tyler Perry said, you know, he's a billionaire right now, but some of it's just luck. You know, right place, right time. That's an awesome piece of advice. Um, for you guys that don't know, I'm actually part of a fraternity, uh, Sigma Phi Rho Incorporated, uh, joined back in 2012. And um, Nubi, I remember um, you actually did and um, have done um, some uh, film work for our fraternity. So uh, how did you go about doing that? Well, um, you know, the two people who, um, one person who's not in the production no more, but still, you know, I consider him a brother, one of my best friends, Hakeem Hill, is cool part, of, part of the fraternity. And then William Adair was part of the production co-directors part of um, Sigma Phi Rho. So they're actually our first client. We They, they hired us in 2009 mm -hmm. to do the AIDS Benefit Show, which is a great time. Um, an absolutely great time to have a comedian, concert, you know, different local uh, lo local artists perform. Just a great time. So that was our first client where we recorded it. And, you know, we do all these little functions. You know, we do the, the typical weddings and all that stuff. We do that to help fund our films. You know, we do it. I remember last time, we didn't, we didn't pay ourselves for two years straight. We took all our money <laughs> and and that we got from our gigs to provide for our films. Again, so that's the reality I want to show you grind. Yeah, present people. You know, that's that's what was needed to happen to go to that next level. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I respect that a lot. By the way, well documented that you're a sports fan. Right. This NBA off season has been crazy. Wade left Miami. Never thought we would see that. Tim Duncan retired in the same year as Kobe. Durant's on the Warriors. Any bold predictions? Any final predictions you want to drop on us? Right, I would say number one, Golden State's not winning the championship, and I'd argue the year before that was they they 
I won't say got lucky, but you know, dodged some bullets. Obviously, with LeBron, clearly, only, yeah, you know, only playing by himself without Kyrie Irving and, and Kevin Love. Before that, um, Tony Allen got injured, and Memphis was up two one. Um, in that series, mm-hmm. when they won the championship, Tony Young got injured and couldn't shut down Seth Curry like he did the first three games. Um, so, you know, they won the championship the year before that, so I give him credit. But I don't think they win it this year because it takes, I think it takes at least, at least a year to get some chemistry. You would to look, talk course. about that. Sometimes yeah. longer. Sometimes longer. That Laker team with Kobe Bryant, GP, Carmelo, Malone, Shaq, didn't win, lost to Detroit. LeBron with the with the big three with, with Bosh and Wade, you know, lost in Dallas. I don't, they're going to be a good team. Don't get me wrong. Oh, yeah. They might even win 70 again, but I don't think they win the chip this year. Rose, healthy. Derrick Rose is only 26 years old. Yeah, if people forget that. And, he's only and, and he was starting to come around the second half of last season, played 66 games. I think if Derrick Rose gives them 60%, they can make it. I love Joe Kim Noah. I mean, he's one and of my it, favorite players. Tough, gritty. I, I want I want Melo to go deep. I'm a Melo guy. I'm a big Melo fan. I want Melo to have that deep playoff run because I think the media twists his game a little bit. They, he's labeled as the ball hog and the the ball stop. I would be too bad those teammates. That's I mean, what I want. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think I think he is a legit superstar, and I hope they make some noise. I think Celtics are the number number two seed in the East. I think so too. I think Horford was a, a good addition, better than people think. Right, Joe Green's actually a nice little addition too. Yeah, a nice swing play, could shoot the three, could put the ball on the floor. Floor, not just a nice pickup. Oh, can't Absolutely. wait for the season. Honestly, and how I feel maybe um, some of the NBA players, they might actually use your quote to inspire them. Because I remember, I actually seen on your Facebook page, you have a quote that says, destroy and rebuild bigger and stronger. So what exactly did you mean by that? And where did you get that from? Oh, man, that was years ago, man. <laughs> <laughs> we all got some things on our face, man. That years ago. There's some things on my face. me. One thing I'm asking, there's some Stuff I said on Facebook that's really stupid. I wish I I never even said. I feel you. Okay, okay, so it's one of those. No, 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 this one, this one's a point. I I named my years. I think this was a this that was a year I'm like destroy. Was it destroy rebuild? Um, Yeah, destroy and rebuild bigger and stronger. Yeah, that's um. Now I I, I'm weird. I I give myself themes for a year, and that was a theme. Okay, that was actually a theme for I. That was a theme when I transferred to Bridgewater State. I wanted to start new, destroy and rebuild, and be stronger. Mm-hmm. So that was the theme I had for that year. My theme for this year is flight. You know, whatever you do, you, you I want to take off. Oh, so that's um, a cool theme and a cool mindset to have. Wow. So yeah, cool. that's what I meant. But you know, just start all over, start clean, and just really go to the next level. Oh, that's it. That's interesting. That's that an interesting lot, tool to keep yourself mm-hmm. motivated throughout the year. You did mention you were a former director of communications in City Hall. What was that experience like? It was cool. I mean, uh, I was there. Um, the mayor saw the work I did for BCA. For um, you know, I worked there for four years, and then you know, he saw the work. He said, "You know, I want you to be part of my team." You know, we never had a video guy working for City Hall. I was honored by it. So I said, "You know, I give it a try." My mind, I knew I wasn't gonna um, be there for long. You know, my mind was, you know, I'm gonna do this for two years. Yeah, and make some connections and go from there and bust my behind. And, you know, I learned a lot from him. I learned how to fundraise from the mayor. You know, I, I learned, you know, and, you know, a lot, you know, a lot of people may have opinions on him, but one thing about the mayor, which I expect, he busts behind. Mm-hmm. The dude busts behind, like, literally. I'm, I'm in the office. I try to get there a little early myself, sometimes 7.30, sometimes 7. The dude's in there already. He doesn't leave till like, 10 o'clock at night. So I learned that grind. Um, I learned how to fundraise. You know, you have to fundraise to do a campaign. Um, and right. I learned how to deal with people. I learned how to deal with stressful environments. It was, it was a job that was rewarding, but it was very stressful. And I left because ultimately I wanted to work back with kids and you know have more time to do my documentary. But it was an honor to be there for two years. I mean, I learned a lot. Learned a lot about people, how to manage money, how to manage people. How probably to Brockton events. as a whole. I mean, yeah. Learned Brockton as a whole. Yeah. You know, I, I, I saw the best and worst of Brockton. You know, so it was, it was cool. It was cool. That was a good experience. It was a great experience. You know, I, I would do it over again on RB. That's that's awesome. But also, I, I bet um, a good experience that you have is, um, you know, teaching television productions um, in Lynn. So how is that like, you know, teaching the kids um, your art film? It's cool. You know, you know, it's funny because um, I'm teaching high school kids. I'm teaching more about life than TV. I mean, honestly. I respect that. You know, the, I respect the, that. You know, the, I keep telling the kids, I'm mean, TV is going to come. You guys are going to learn in college and everything. I'm yeah. more concerned about them being respectful being on time stuff like that you know um things they need in life yeah i'm do quite frankly i mean i'm I, I think i'm a fun teacher but i'm also hard on them too you know and i'm hard on them because 
you know, particularly kids in the inner city, you need to be able to understand that. Number one, less than 2% of people in the media are of African, uh, of color. So you got to grind to get to that next level. You got to grind. Mm -hmm. And, you know, most of my class, obviously, you know, is, you know, Latino, black, and so forth. Um, and, and I just wanted to make that clear that, you know, to go to the next level, you got to be disciplined, you got to get grades, and then, you know, work on the TV stuff. But I love it because, number one, I, I love being able to see a, a kid who really had no confidence at the beginning of the year till the end of the year in front of the camera doing TV work. I mean, that that's cool. So let's just say they don't even do TV. They, they got a lot of confidence within themselves. Mm -hmm. And I'm more happy about that than any type of TV that they learn. So it's funny, teaching you know teaching TV in college is different. It's more technical. This is what it's all about. In high school, their minds aren't even, you know, they're 13, 14, 15 years old. You know, they don't even know what they want to do in life. Sometimes they're taking TV because it's a fun course. They might like me as a teacher. They might like a person in the class. You know, who knows? So I'm more concerned about teaching more about life in the class. All right. It's yeah. a very important job to have as a teacher, just, you know, building their mind and just the actions that they take. I like that a lot, my man. I, I really I like the fact that you you are emphasizing on future generations, man. And again, appreciate you for no, coming thanks by. Me, guys. Appreciate thanks you, for grace oh, with your presence. If you liked anything newbie had to say, or what we had to say, or if you thought it was insightful, feel free to like us on Facebook at No Holds Bar Podcast. Subscribe to us on iTunes. Subscribe to us on YouTube. And remember, we'll hold your attention.